The following program is brought to you in part by Logisticare, the nation's leading provider of specialized transportation network management to state and local government clients. By Maine's credit unions, now is the time for a credit union. There is one for you. And by MacPage, developing relationships, earning trust, addressing complex issues, and making a difference. Welcome to Pingree and Kate's The Main Event. In our left corner, we have Hannah Pingree, former House Majority Leader and Speaker of the House. In our right corner, we have Senator Roger Cates of Augusta, representing District 24. This week, Roger and Hannah have assembled a panel of experts to discuss tough main issues affecting the entire state. To wrap it up, we'll visit with Gary Crocker as he gives us his view from West Godna. It's all right here with Pingree and Cates, the main event. You know, it's really about time we are finally getting charter schools here in the state of Maine. We're one of the last states to do it, and it seems to be working pretty darn well. Well, we don't know yet, Roger. I mean, we have 10 schools authorized, but the jury's still out as to whether these kids will really be raised up in education compared to other Maine students. So well, too soon to tell. Well, welcome to Pingree and Kate's The Main Event. And as you can see, we're going to be talking about charter schools today. And Hannah, you know, the state motto is dear ago I lead, but this is one area we really haven't let in. I mean, the idea is that, sure, the public's got a, an obligation to fund public education, but why shouldn't there be some competition and innovation? And that's really what charter schools are about. Well, I think, I mean, the other side would certainly say that Maine has great public schools. Not across the board. There are certainly areas and cities and towns where we need work, but we have a lot of great schools, and it's making sure that charter schools don't actually diminish the quality of some of our strong public schools. I come from a rural area where I actually worry that charter schools setting up could draw away the best and brightest. Um, charter schools, in my mind, aren't all a bad thing, and there are cases where they could make sense. It's just how do we implement it, and how do they impact our existing um, strong public schools? Well, the good news is we've got a terrific yeah. panel of guests with us today to sort this out, and we're going to come back and talk about charter schools right after this break. Great. At MacPage, we believe in developing relationships, earning trust, addressing complex issues, and making a difference. We enjoy the people we serve and care about the work we do, providing integrated accounting, consulting, and tax services to our clients throughout New England and across the country. Please visit us at MacPage.com to learn more. The trend is clear. More Maine people are joining credit unions. The reasons are clear. Credit unions offer something different from banks. True financial value. Loan rates that are usually lower. Products and services with low fees or none at all. That's because credit unions are owned by their members. People just like you, who create a community that welcomes you wherever you are in life. Discover why a credit union is your best financial choice. Now is the time. And welcome back. Hannah, let's introduce our guests. I'm pleased to be joined today by my colleague, Senator Brian Langley from Hancock County, member of the Education Committee, and also my friend Cheryl Klukey from Augusta, who is the mother of my favorite Olympian, uh, a loser, and also a member of the Maine Charter School Association. Welcome. Anna? Great. Um, and I have got uh, State Representative Brian Hubble from a Democrat from Bar Harbor, as well as State Representative Karen Kuziak, um, a uh, Democrat from Fairfield. Both of them are former school board members or current school board members and long histories in education. So thank you both for being with us. And I'll let Roger's uh, panel start it off. Okay, so let's talk about why charter schools are such a good idea for Maine. Brian, you were one of the architects of the original charter school law back in 2011. Uh, we joined many other states that have, have charter schools. Tell us a bit about what they are and why Maine's future public education should include charter schools. Thanks, Roger. First, I'd like to point out that the first time I saw the charter school legislation when I served in the House in the 124th legislature, it was defeated in the 124th and then was revamped and tweaked and came back to us in the 125th. But in a, in a nutshell for me, I think charter schools offer students uh, a different pathway, a different alternative, um, maybe more uh, suited for their learning styles. Okay, and charter schools are public schools and publicly funded, but, but typically 
uh, specialize in, in one particular area of, of academics? Is that fair? Well, they can be a whole host of things depending on, upon the folks that are putting together charter schools. They can be thematic. Uh, they can be, uh, you know, around forestry or farming or technology. Um, but the, the sky's the limit as to, uh, you know, what the particular theme is that someone might think is innovative. And Cheryl, you come from the world of public education. You've been a principal. You've been a special ed teacher. You've been gifted and talented. Uh, many people from public education are opposed to charter schools. You're not one of them. You've been very active. Why is it a good deal for Maine? Well, I've been act You're absolutely correct. I am, a, I am a very huge advocate of public schools, but I think we need to provide more options for kids who are not making it and falling through the cracks. Um, there are some, we have, last year we lost 2,000 high school kids that dropped out of school. That affects us economically. And most of these kids, as I've seen over the years of being in public education, are smart kids, but their skills do not translate to paper and test pencil tests. And they're just, they don't have a feeling of being welcomed in the school for whatever reason. And we need to get them back or stop the, the bloodletting of, of dropouts. And we need more options for kids. And I think education has changed so much that parents and students who understand their learning styles, where I never understood my learning style, and were when it was willing to conform and go along and was successful, but these kids are not. They know their learning styles, they know what can make them successful, and they just aren't getting their needs met. How could anyone possibly disagree with that? Well, I'm going to turn to my side of the panel for sort of the big picture first. Um, Karen, tell me, you're an education professor. You've looked at this issue nationally. Talk to me about the national picture around charter schools and whether or not they have proven successful. Sure. Well, the research about charter schools nationally is, is very mixed. I mean, there are some charter schools whose students tend to do better in achievement. Uh, some do much uh, less well uh, compared to their uh, student colleagues in public schools, and, and some are do about the same. And there are so many different kinds of charter schools. There are the no-nonsense, almost militaristic charter schools that have developed chains. They're in, in various different states. Uh, there are mom-and-pop kinds of charter schools where you know, a community gets together and they want a particular school that focuses on the arts or on sciences. Uh, so, so there are a wide variety of kinds of charter schools. And I just want to emphasize the, the research is, is mixed. Great. Brian, can you tell us a little bit about Maine's specific charter school law? How many schools do we have? Um, how are they paid for? And, and what are your, your thoughts on how that's working? Um, yes, uh, Maine uh, in the 125th uh, adopted charter school legislation, which uh, approved the Maine Charter School Commission, which is, is by d deliberately isolated from legislative influence to objectively consider the merits of up to 10 state-approved charter schools. There's also no limit to the, uh, the opportunity for locally uh, approved charter schools, charter schools that we uh, uh, approved through local school districts. And we're in the midst of that process right now. And so where does the money come from for a student go to, going to a charter school? Well, the money, uh, uh, money and governance, is, as you all know, is what a lot of these tensions hinge upon. And the funding at present, uh, there's, I mean, it's, it's a zero-sum game. So for every student that attends the charter school, the funding for that is, is provided as a combination of state and local funding from the resident district from which the, uh, the student attends. Uh, so for every dollar that goes into a charter school, it arguably is one less dollar in in the uh, in the neighborhood school system, so that in itself prompts attention, which is perhaps unfortunate. Great. Brian, let me ask you a political question because, as I recall, in the 125th, the charter schools were passed largely along party lines. This is a Republican initiative, uh, and there has been some resistance from the the other side of the aisle to charter schools. And could you talk a little bit about that and, and why? Uh, what, sort of what the politics of charter schools are and, and, and how the, the ones we have seem to be working or not working. Well, uh, first of all, in the 125th legislature, it came out of our committee bipartisan. We had, uh, we had a couple of folks from the other side that had also voted for it in the 124th. People had served on the education committee. So they had said to me that they saw a need for charter schools. And uh, I think what actually ends up happening, it comes down uh, on sort of philosophical lines. Representative Hubble and I have had this conversation many, many times. And that is the sort of individual students' needs as they go off and then the collective good of public education. And if uh, your funds are going uh, off to one direction, are they not going into the public schools to help make those better? And it, so 
I think it really comes down along more philosophical lines. I know politics gets into it. Uh, I think it, it uh, was defeated in the 124th in the Senate by one vote, and I think that was a Republican who voted against it at the end. So I think it's flip-flopped from time to time, but it's more along philosophical lines as to, um, I think, the real divides on this. Yeah, I think we got about a minute to go. Hannah, you got another question? So we, we just heard about kind of common ground between you and the senator working on um, talking about charter schools, and you two have worked on a specific bill on virtual charter schools, of which you both have concerns. Tell me, what is a virtual charter school? A virtual charter school is, uh, is, is operates like a charter school, except that the students don't actually attend in brick and mortar uh, building. And so there's opportunities for students to learn uh, basically over the computer, exchange content with, uh, 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 these, typically with these content providers from all over the world. Are they a good thing? Well, the the record of virtual charter schools actually, in comparison to the charter schools, uh, is is unequivocally poor. I think uh, twenty seven percent of virtual charter schools uh, ha or the students within virtual charter schools make adequate yearly progress. I think. 67% of them are in for two years or less. They're much different. Uh, that's not to say that they can't work well, but the record so far has been pretty poor. Great, and we will be right back. Now is the time. If you're ready for a home loan or a home repair, if you want to get behind the wheel of a new vehicle, make it happen with a visit to your local Maine credit union for low loan rates, great terms, and decisions made locally. Everything feels right about a credit union, starting with people who are always willing to work with you. If you want a better way to borrow, join a Maine credit union, your best financial choice. Now is the time. And welcome back to Pingree and Kate's The Main Event. We're talking about charter schools, and when we left off, we were talking about virtual charter schools. Let's hear from the Senator and Cheryl. Great. Well, uh, you obviously just heard Brian talk a little bit about what is a virtual charter school. There's been a lot of concern raised about them in Maine, even a moratorium bill proposed, actually, uh, by the Senator. Um, from an educational perspective, what, where do you stand on virtual charter schools, especially the, the for-profit model that's been proposed um, before the Charter School Commission? I think virtual charter schools are very much in need. I know when the Charter School Commission was first formed, they traveled thousands of miles around the state, visited many, many communities, and one of the things that came through loud and clear in the rural communities is we need virtual online s schooling for our kids because of money, because of mills being closed down, education, whatever. I'm a big supporter of them. I was really disappointed. Um, I think we need both. I don't have a problem with state-run virtual schools at all. But that would only give access, limited access to kids to take a course here, take a course there within the traditional confines of the existing structure of public schools. I think we need um, uh, online virtual schools for um, a total program for kids, uh, a school, a virtual school. Um, because I just think there are so many needs. My daughter, as Roger was uh, um, referring to, when she was trying to get through Coney High School and training for an elite athlete as a loser, we had to fax things. I wish we'd had virtual schools then. It would have been a lot easier. Coney did great by her, but there was a few that just didn't do well by her, and it was a real struggle for her. I think there's a lot of reasons, um, medical reasons, uh, constant bullying by kids, um, uh, medical um, advanced learners just aren't getting the rigor of curriculum. We just need more. Again, it's another option for kids. Brian, obviously you are in the trenches on education policy, and there's been um, concerns, especially from a school district like uh, the Skowhegan area, where funding is really the issue. Charter schools, the money follows the kid, and, and obviously the concern with virtual charter schools is we may be seeing a lot more kids um, in certain areas of the state. How do we solve this problem and make sure any charter school um, doesn't detract from the public schools that we have, especially the successful ones? Well, I think once we get past the original debate of whether charters should be here or not, and I think we're kind of moving past that, then we have to really look at the funding mechanism. And the funding mechanism, really, we had a great uh, amendment last year to do that, which would really create a, a category in our general purpose aid um, and treat charter schools as if they were a school system. And then the funding would flow through, and no one district would get penalized more than another if a number of students went to that char to any charter school. So that's really the direction we've got to head, and Representative Hubble and I are going to continue to work on that to try to get that funding mechanism solved. 
Well, it is good to have two guests that are working together. That's obviously the, the point of how we want government to work. So I'll let Roger ask uh, the, the other well, side. Thank you. It doesn't always work that way. No, it doesn't. But, but hopefully here it does. Uh, Brian, um, it's been a difficult journey to get to this point on charter schools. The the teachers' union has been uh, very much opposed to the to bringing charter schools into the state of Maine. Um, it's it's been a, a tough slogging here. Uh, what's what's the resistance of public education to doing something innovative and and competitive in education, which we really haven't had before? Well, I, I actually I, I think I would disagree with that characterization. Uh, my hope certainly is that public schools can be just as innovative as charter schools. Uh, and, and to that respect, uh, I, I think we appreciate the challenge, those of us who are advocates of conventional public schools. I, the original intention of charter schools was, in fact, to serve as innovative examples. My concern is that is that we haven't adequately addressed the consequence on overall educational capacity of charter schools. So that that, uh, in, in fact, the more successful charter schools are, are under the current model, arguably the less uh, resources there will be for the regular schools, the ones that, that need to improve the most. Uh, I wish we could take away that co uh, competition and opposition, and I would look forward to the day when there's charter school advocates sitting in appropriations with us advocating for more resources for Maine students. Sure. Karen, let me ask a little bit more about that, because the idea of competition, I think we can all agree that the public has the obligation to fund public education. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the public can be the only, the only provider of a public education. And as we see things like the success of the Science and Technology School at Limestone and the early success of Goodwill Hinckley with at-risk kids, why isn't competition uh, a good thing in public education as well that will, will make public school is that much better because of the competition and will give people a more wide range of choice? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, I was reading uh, some research this weekend in preparation for today and uh, the MEPRI report that was prepared by uh, uh, Dr. Silver, Silver Nail uh, clearly stated that there hasn't been, in, in states we've had uh, charter schools in place for quite a while. There has not been uh, evidence of competition as, as far as outcomes. You know, So if you look at the charter school and you look at the local public school, the local public school hasn't necessarily risen to whatever occasion uh, the, the charter school threatened. And, and nor has, the, in all cases, has the charter school student's outcomes been better than the public school. So there's no evidence that competition works. And I'd like to say that you know, here in the United States, we've had a long history of public support and public oversight of uh, public education. I mean, that's what it is. Uh, state, local, and federal governments uh, have uh, are combined to provide funding and provide oversight for various kinds of programs. So, that, I mean, that's been one of my concerns is with, with some of the public charter, with some of the charter schools models is that uh, state raised taxes or local taxpayer money is going to support, in some cases, in other states, a, a for-profit charter school, or in our cases, charter schools over which we have no, uh, local taxpayers have no say or control about curriculum or uh, teachers and teacher salaries, things like that. I have a feeling that there are other two guests might feel a little bit more kindly about competition with ed education, Anna. I'm going to uh, let the senator respond to that, but just, you know, the way I look at competition in, in schools, it could be incredibly um, helpful at some point, but at some point in competition, somebody is losing. And a concern, especially for rural Maine, where you represent, is that a charter school could be drawing away um, not only money, but also the best and the brightest. So so how do you combat that argument? Well, I think what, from what I've seen in, in education, I spent nearly 30 years working in a, teaching in a vocational school. And I think what it had come down to me is when a, when a parent had come up to me and said, your school saved my child. Um, and I've looked at those studies that said, um, you know, a third of the students have done better than the traditional school, a third have done the same, and then a third have done uh, more poorly. But if all of that, that collective were headed towards dropping out, that means a third of those dropouts, you know, have performed better, and a third of those potential dropouts have performed the same, but they're not dropouts. So there's... You know, it, it, the the real struggle for me has been when it's when it's your child that's being affected, and and your child is disenfranchised. You know, how do you deal with that? So, that's been the the real struggle with this. Cheryl, I'll kind of give you the same question. I mean, what what does it mean uh, for kids in public schools where, you know, the best and brightest are are drawn away um, by a charter school? I mean, what does it mean to the kids left in a public school, especially if that school loses funding? 
Um, that was the same argument that you, was used for the magnet school in Limestone, of which I was pretty involved in, in getting the law passed, and it didn't bear that out. The kids who are succeeding and are conforming and comfortable with that, they stay in their schools, which is great. It's the kids who just don't fit. And right now, the magnet school is um, ninth in the U.S. for magnet schools. It's the top high school in Maine. And we should be very proud of that. And um, in terms of the virtual schools, it's a fair statement to say that a lot of them, especially in the, the issue with the not-for-profit schools, um, have a lot of bad PR. And but the cluster of where those are are in like five states, a lot of and a lot of charter schools that have failed, and they should be closed. But there, our law is the second highest ranked law in this in the nation, with our accountability, evaluation, and monitoring. And any charter school or virtual school can be shut down in one year. Well, I want to thank a great panel on both sides uh, for really helping us understand charter schools better. I think I'm smarter, and uh, I certainly look forward to continuing to follow all the good work you're all doing. So you're already smarter. We'll come back in just a minute and chat a little right. more. At MacPage, we believe in developing relationships, earning trust, addressing complex issues, and making a difference. We enjoy the people we serve and care about the work we do, providing integrated accounting, consulting, and tax services to our clients throughout New England and across the country. Please visit us at MacPage.com to learn more. Well, welcome back. Uh, we just had a great panel, but Roger, what do you think about the arguments in, in favor of charter schools and, and the conversation well, we had today? Well, I was really pleased, Hannah, because I think we've come a long way in two years. Two years ago, this was extremely contentious in the legislature, and there was a whole group of people who didn't want charter schools, period. It looks like we've moved beyond that now, which is great. But to me, the basic point is this. If you've got one restaurant in town, uh, it, it'll do all right, but if you get two restaurants, they're now going to compete. They're going to compete in particular over quality. Both of them are going to get better. And to me, that's the thing with charter schools. Competition is a good thing, even in public education. And I think we can see it starting to work now in Maine. I mean, I, I think you're not wrong entirely, and I think really the jury is still out. We have 10 charter schools allowed in Maine, and we're going to keep testing to see how they do. We don't yet have the data in to say, how are these schools working? And we have some battles going on about how do they get paid for? Right. Who are they taking money away from? We have a few school districts like the Skowhegan area with a real conflict over funding. Um, so, you know, we'll see how this pans out. And, and the virtual charter schools are kind of a whole nother right. fight, which is currently happening in the legislature, and, and we'll certainly see what happens with that. Right, but a lot of the things you're talking about, in particular the funding, I mean, to me those are adult problems. We ought to be able to figure that out. Yeah. But the idea is they're just kids who you can't fit a round peg in a, in a square mm -hmm. hole. We get kids falling through the cracks. Charter schools are a way of, of, of trying to find something for everybody. And innovation and competition is not usually bad in any area of life, and hopefully not this one, too. Well, speaking of innovation and competition, uh, we've got our friend Gary Crocker, who is going to um, talk to us about a unique educational idea model that I, I believe he is proposing in Gardner, or maybe he's already underway. So um, let's hear from Gary. Welcome to West Gardner. As you'd expect, when it comes to education, West Gardner, as always, is ahead of the curve, around the corner, or over the edge, especially when it comes to charter schools. When public schools failed to address certain critical areas of education, we took them on. We are, in fact, the first town in Maine to make a, a truly futuristic approach to the highly technical area of building trades and establish the first in the nation duct tape academy. And without getting too technical for the viewing audience, let me just say that the courses that we offer, uh, you know, on the proper use of duct tape and what the faculty refer to as companion products, uh, these include WD-40, blue, green, black, and tan tabs, as well as other high-tech and indispensable innovations in the exciting world of leading-edge construction technology. Our entire curriculum will be taught at the highest levels by highly skilled and experienced application specialists. To quote the Dean of Duct Tape Technology, Dean Hickey, when you graduate from the Duct Tape Academy, you'll be able to apply wrinkle-free taps under extreme conditions and make it stick. Yeah, our graduates are true craftsmen and women who can turn your trailer into a showplace. You'll see one day or laughs. Our motto is, 
If it can't tap it and tape it, it ain't hardly worth having. Yeah. You know, Hannah, after watching that, I'm inspired to go back to school myself. How about you? Uh, all I know is that duct tape and tarp can fix anything. So, well, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at the next main event. This program has been brought to you by Logisticare, the nation's leading provider of specialized transportation network management to state and local government clients. By Maine's credit unions, now is the time for a credit union. There is one for you. And by MacPage, developing relationships, earning trust, addressing complex issues, and making a difference.